Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Face the Truth. I just had a really amazing talk with my guest this week. I think you're really going to enjoy it. She's an amazing artist, known mostly for her oil painting and charcoal drawings. Um, she does a lot of exploring and changing up her style and so on. It's really cool. It's the first time I've ever met her, so it was really interesting uh, getting to hear about her techniques and her uh, just her perspective and her take on on her art and, and how she goes about you know creating her paintings and images um, she shared a lot about her painting techniques which was really cool and uh, overall just such a sweet person she's so kind and nice and i really enjoy talking with her so without further ado please welcome the one and only agnes Grokuska. did i say that wrong Right, so how's it going? <laughs> it's, it's good to, to finally talk with you, um, yeah. I've uh, you know I've been a uh, fan of your work for a little bit on Instagram. Uh, I find your paintings to be exciting because there's something there's there's a nice life to them um, that I really enjoy. I'm an artist myself, um, so it's really a pleasure to have you on the podcast and get to talk to you about this. Thank you. It's, it's good to talk to you and good to hear that you know. <laughs> my paintings look exciting and yeah, yeah I, I really enjoy uh, I really enjoy them I uh, I am not only am I an artist but I'm a I'm I'm one of the, I for me personally I think all artists should try to be um, as awesome as I am no just kidding I feel <laughs> like artists in general that we should be open to every single style of art and take every single thing in and try to look at everything from a fresh uh, perspective, if that makes sense. Yeah. And um, so I, I have a, just a wide range of art that, it, that I get excited about when I see it. And that's what happened when I first saw your paintings because, uh, for one, uh, I'm not saying that your work looks the same. It's not. It's, but it, in the genre of Lucian Freud a little bit, there's some, there's some of that kind of painting, painterly type um, aspects to your paintings that drew me in, like especially your – line and color series that you that you yeah, did. Yeah. I really, really love that work where you can kind of see the sketch coming through and, and then the and then you put that paint in there real thick. Yeah, certainly the yeah. texture, yeah. It's yeah. similar. Yeah. Um what, what I, I was curious like what your um I see like some you've got some of your pieces behind you and and um I also heard you in a different interview, I think with my friends from Plebeian uh, mm -hmm. talk about the size of your paintings um, right and they definitely do are are way smaller than they appear when you see them mm -hmm. um, like when you see them on instagram or whatever but um that's that's pretty interesting do you ever work larger than that or are they pretty much that size uh most of them are the size you see behind me so like the smallest is um 16 by 16 inches yeah. and then the largest ones are maybe like well not the largest but like the medium size would be 30 by 30 and then I have some larger works like maybe 48 by 72 or something like mm. that but that's yeah. that's pretty unusual yeah and uh, I would love to work bigger like the size is something I'd love to explore the um, where we are right now it's my studio and that's like a studio attached to our house so the size of my studio is pretty much what you know dictates the size yeah. as yeah. you know <laughs> as big as i can go so i have two easel and easel set up and uh, that's kind of the ceiling is the limit <laughs> yeah here but uh, yeah i'd love to go bigger i think that would really like you know translate yeah, that's something that i'm wanting to do as well just for fun uh for myself you know um mm -hmm. It's fun when you when you see those paintings, like those big, huge paintings. But, I know. But it's interesting because your the way that your technique, it for some reason I th I think it might be just because you're using such big brushwork, mm -hmm. um, with the form that it just has this appearance of like, oh, that looks like a giant painting, but it's kind of cool. I, I love that you're painting that thick. Um, yeah. I was curious, you know, technique wise, are you? No, well, before I even get into that, I was looking at your website. Um, I really like 
how experimental you seem to be with your paintings. Uh, and that's something that I think another thing that artists should should try to do <laughs> as much as possible right. is, is experiment and try different things. Um, I had, uh, in fact, I had Sterling Hunley on my podcast last week, and he's one of those artists that, man, that guy explores and he'll use every medium you can think of and it's really yeah, cool I listen i listen yeah. to that podcast it's, and sterling is actually here in richmond so i, yeah. I live in richmond too oh. so that's that's funny you have back to back oh that's awesome yeah. representing yeah. richmond richmond, that's richmond. Nice. yeah Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> um but i that's one thing i liked about when i saw your work on your website is that you also like i i, I was looking at your your archive of your work yeah. where you were you're doing these paintings that are more, I guess what maybe, I guess they would say traditional portraits, right. um, which are painted very realistic and very, you know, it's really beautiful paintings. There's, there's, they're great. Um, but it, it's cool to see that you're, you're exploring and pushing to a way where you're using color and your palette and brush strokes and things to do, to express and say something else, still capturing the, the form. Um, it, look, it's, it makes me want to like, <laughs> stop doing this podcast and just start painting. <laughs> uh, it's, that's, that's good. Yeah, so I mean, for one thing, I get bored pretty easily. <laughs> so <laughs> I have to try something new from time to time. But it's kind of like you say, it starts with one thing that maybe, you know, uh, excites me in a painting like the line. And then I want to push it further and go, you know, see how how far can I go with that yeah. and try maybe, you know, is it an out, the outline that interests me or is it the sketchy nature of the first, you know, gesture we do? So I'll try different things and kind of the only way you can, you can find out is after doing uh, a few of them, <laughs> you know, like yeah. actually, actually following that to a, to a point, I guess, when you feel somewhat satisfied. So that's why I, I like working in series. Mm. So I'll do several kind of in the same idea because it's exploring the same thought, the same, you know, an experiment kind of. And and then something else, you know, like like the the show you were talking about, line and color, we were focused on line and color. But then the next thing that I started doing was pushing color even more. Yeah. So That's from awesome. that from that show, I kind of took the took the color and and thought how how bright can I go, how colorful and how you know what 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 will that bring to my mm. work? That's awesome. Yeah. You um, now, I, I another thing I think I read was that you you started like working professionally as an artist in 2016 is when you started. Um, uh, yeah. So my. First show uh, was in uh, 2016, and that's kind of when I start. Yeah, yeah, you can say I started professionally working as a as a fine, fine so, art. So my question is, what were you doing before then? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I worked a little bit as a graphic designer. So just kind of that was my way of of easing myself uh, back into into art, into doing anything artistic. I went to an art school. I'm from Poland originally. I grew up and went to school, to an art academy there. And uh, my husband and I, we, uh, we got married in college and left pretty early, uh, left Poland, I mean, pretty early for, uh, for his education, for his school. And we lived in uh, Europe for a few years and then moved to United States. So that time I, I left school <laughs> kind of with the idea, oh, I'll, I'll go back. I'll be back, but yes. I never did. Um, and I was home raising family. So I didn't do any art for about 20 years. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. So like a long hiatus. Um, and and after our youngest uh, went back to school, went not back, but went uh, to kind of full, full time, full day to school. And I had the time to to do something and to even start thinking clearly, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. I, wow, I that's slowly. A long hiatus. It is. It, yeah. it is a long break. Yeah. Wow. So, so, like, I can relate to that a little bit. I feel, I, I feel guilty sometimes because, so my wife is also a, a painter. She does oil painting, and um, two years ago, two and a half years ago, we had a baby girl, mm. and 
she hasn't really gotten to do much painting. Yeah. Um, she she's she does a little bit. She's done some small like plein air paintings, and she's done like um, I bought her an iPad so she could kind of mess around on that a little bit. But mm-hmm. we're about to have another daughter in, <laughs> in two weeks. Sweet. Uh, so she's been you know she's been pretty much full time you know mama. So yeah, I can definitely relate to that. Um, uh, but that that had to have, a little bit had to drive you crazy. You know the, that art like you know like I just want to. Be doing yeah, this, you know. Yeah, of course, <laughs> you can lock the kids up in a dungeon or something and <laughs> just paint for a little bit. And <laughs> yeah, it's not that easy. Yeah. But also, yeah. I feel I feel like you know I didn't have the mental space for that. I yeah, I wanted to do something, but honestly, all I could think was just like kind of the daily, day to day life, and to think in an abstract way. Yeah. You know, and if you even think about what do you want to say, not even finding the time, but kind of like, what's your idea? Why why would yeah, I want to do it? Yeah. And I'm sure it's different <laughs> for different people, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. Some can maybe marry those two things. Uh, in, well, in it's, some it's way. a challenge. It's a but challenge, it is. you know? And yeah. like, I mean, it's it's difficult. I mean, for me, I, I make my living as an artist and take care of the whole family that way. And I love my kids and just want to hang out and play with my kids all the time. But it, it's not, it, it's not realistic. Like when they come down here to, I can't yeah. work. I can't no, work when they're playing out, you know? So it, it's definitely understandable. Um, so what, when you decided to come back to paint or like before, did you really do much painting before that? I didn't, so, except for the school, okay. you know, for painting you do in, in painting class <laughs> okay. at school. And also, you know, my major was uh, industrial design. So not mm. even, you know, fine art. The yeah. way the school was set up, which was really a good thing, was that everyone kind of the, the painting students, the sculpture, the graphic design had uh, everyone had the, the base classes like painting, drawing, sculpture. So you got that that base education in art, in fine art. And then on the top of it, you had the, um, the classes that you specialize in. Mm. OK, so, so I got, you know, my painting and, and drawing that way but when I was starting to think even what what do I want to do going back from you know staying at home the first thing I did was uh, a little bit of like website design logo design mostly because it was computer work so you just like with the iPad you're you're you know you're talking about that's something you can still do at home and with a little bit of time here and there and without the whole setup like you know, I need now a yeah. studio and yeah, paints everywhere. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. That's really cool. Yeah, so I mean, you've uh, you know, we've all seen what kind of things can happen from 2016 till now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so it's really impressive to see what you've done uh in that in that amount of time i mean it's a lot of work it seems like you're like a busy little bee i Uh, am i work like crazy (laughs) that's awesome it's like i'm making up the time you know yeah no that's great that's really (laughs) great um i love you know i wanted to talk about your your painting techniques i'm curious because um, like I'm looking at some of the paintings I'm seeing behind you right now. Um, are those, is that canvas that's taped to the wall? It is. Like, I know it looks oh, okay. kind of strange. So that's the way I work. And I started doing it, uh, because that let me not be too precious about, you know, the outcome, mm. like not be stressed out because I have huge rolls of 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 unstretched canvas, which is much less expensive than yeah. than buying, you know, stretched or um, or or another surface. And I'll start something, try to paint. If it works, that's great. I'll I'll tape it to the wall to dry and stretch it. I stretch um, stretch it myself. If it doesn't work, it's a you know goes. I toss it away and I'll start another one without, you know, thinking, oh, gosh, it has to work out because I paid so and so for that, (laughs) you know, canvas for that stretched, prepared, gessoed and and everything surface. (laughs) uh, And it really worked. It really helped me to be like kind of free and go, whatever. I'll throw it away. I'll 
take another one because I have, you know, so just feet and feet, yards and yards, yeah. really. Of, I think of that's it. a great point that you brought up because mm-hmm. I, I think that a lot of artists struggle with that where they, first of all, everyone thinks they have to put everything on Instagram. Yeah, well. Like every yeah, little sketch <laughs> or every little thing. And it's like, it's like, no, some things you can just do and you can work on things. And isn't it kind of fun to not show anybody at all? Like yeah. it's like your secret stash of, of things you're working on. Maybe one day you'll show people. Who cares? But like I think people get too married to something, too committed to something without um, – uh, you know, I guess I guess it's like I don't know how to say it the right way. I think it's the idea of a finished product. You, you know, we're we're so yeah. used to kind of that. Like, it's too hard to like yeah. throw something away or start over because it's like every you know this is my masterpiece or whatever, and it's like maybe you should just paint to paint and you know, just yeah. explore and push yourself. And I think it's good to free yourself that way. You know, I mean, there's there's times um, like. You know, you work in like for me when I'm working on illustration type stuff or like a magazine or whatever, you have to learn to not fall in love with what you're doing to the point of, you know, not being able to change it. Because yeah. a lot of times an art director's like, uh, yeah, I know you like what you did, but that's not what we want. <laughs> and you got to change everything. And it's so and you have to be able to just be like, OK, yeah, throw yeah. that away. And you don't, you, like, just, you know, you can't get that too attached to it. Yeah. yeah to it. And, uh, but I, I know it, it's, it's hard. It's hard for people uh, to, to do that. <laughs> but um, I think that's a really smart idea, though. It's really cool. And yeah. I, when you're painting, are you more of a direct painter where you're, you know, just laying in your color as is without um, underpaintings? Or do you do some kind yeah, of underpainting? Yeah, I sometimes, well, it really depends. But I kind of tend to have two ways. I either just go at it without any prepared sketches. I mean, I still will establish the basic face features or something, but directly with a, with oil paint and just brush on the canvas and then go kind of in one go, so one day, one sitting mm. painting, or I will develop a drawing first. So just on paper, I will and that's usually with either commissioned work, commissioned work, or portraits that I really want them to look like the person you know I'm portraying. Because very often I'll work with uh, with somebody, either a model or a photograph, and I only use their features as a base, mm. mostly for like that maybe the light, the direction of light, and the you know structure, but. Then I stop looking at the uh, at the source material at all, and just look at the painting and kind of go with it where the painting wants to go, so to speak. So that's the two kind of uh, ways of doing it: hmm. either just go in one go or make a drawing first, transfer the drawing onto canvas, and then do like the same thing. Just go with paint. Hmm. Um, yeah. And it's usually all one layer, like people sometimes ask yeah. about layers. So there aren't layers per se, but like with the transferred drawing, I might go over the drawing first with something or amber or something and let it dry and then go with the color. But that's not like the you know traditional way of, of layering your painting with transparent yeah. layers and letting them dry. Well, I mean, that's the, I mean, they have that saying, there's so many ways to skin a cat. Right, right. But like with, with, I mean, you can, there's no, I don't think there's like the right way, you know. No, to do of it. course. There's so right. many techniques. People want uh, to know, you know, there's, yeah. I, I get a lot of technical questions kind of on Instagram. And I think what people mean by layers, like is it in layers or is it a la prima? Yeah. They, you know, that's what they mean. Is it like several layers that have to dry yeah. over several days and so on? So no, that's not that. I mean, it's it's funny because I, I mean, I I went to art school after I was already working. I was already working as a professional illustrator, mm-hmm. and I went to art school for almost two years before I quit and just went full time back into my my career. Um, so I'm mostly a self taught when it comes to my painting and everything. Um, and so, like, and to be honest, I don't even remember quite 
of what I learned in art school about painting. I think I was pretty much, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, art, sticks... art school tends to be like that. <laughs> yeah, nothing really stands out to me too much of what I, but, but I remember figuring things out on my own. Um, and for me, like, I tend to, like, I definitely will work in layers uh, as, as, as far as, like, you know, work on the painting and then come back the next day and work on it again. But mm -hmm. I'm not working in layers in a way where I first have to do this thing. Right. And then I have to come in, I have to lay in the green. And then I have to yeah, come yeah, in, I have yeah. to lay in this. I don't mm -hmm. do that. I just, I just paint it like I just, uh, it's hard to explain. Like I paint, it's funny, I paint with in oils pretty much the same way I paint with uh, digital painting. Digital. Mm -hmm. I just mix my color and I put it in. I just paint it. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I know there's a lot of different techniques. Like sometimes I do underpaintings. Excuse me. Um, but I mostly do underpaintings because I'm looking for a certain effect. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I might want like a certain color to pop through. And so I want to do like maybe like a really warm underpainting so that when I paint through that red or something pops through and it just yeah, looks. Yeah. But it's not it's not really necessary for the actual painting. It's just more of an aesthetic choice, if that makes mm -hmm. sense, right? Yeah, yeah, design, design choice. Yeah, so I think that there's so much more to it than, you know, what it is is people are look, looking at the paintings and that you're doing and they're like, like, where's, I want the step-by-step. -step, right, know, they're like, trying to unravel the, the yeah. process <laughs> to then be able to maybe repeat it or learn something. And that's understandable, yeah. you know. I'm, I'm, what I'm curious about, is because I've never really messed with this too much. I mean, a little bit, I have a little bit, but not to the extent where I feel like I know what I'm doing is the thick impasto type texture painting mm -hmm. that, that I see. So when you're painting that thick, uh, when you're uh, like, first of all, are you, is it most, is it a lot of palette knife uh, or is it? No, it's all brush. It's uh, okay. bristle brushes mm -hmm. for for the texture and just paint. So I don't really use any Not mediums. Not much medium. Okay. Not much. I mean, I, I'll, I the only medium really I use is linseed oil mixed with a tiny bit of gamzol, and but that's not for the texture. That's for actual actually the the fine lines, the tiny details maybe for the eyes. You know, like the iris. I need to put in the, the mm. little black dot, and I'll use use uh, the medium for that other than that it's paint straight from the tube i so mean just like mixed free, but there. yeah so you so mix, that... mix up some so do you have uh, it so is, do you have like a, a whole like um pre-game plan before where you have to like mix several no, piles of no i don't and... i try huh? to mix like at least the skin colors for myself because that speeds up the process a lot. So I will yeah. look at the model. I will, you know, kind of like sit and think for a bit. What do I want the painting to look at, like, invoke, you know, like the mood and whatever message. If I'm even trying to go for a message, but <laughs> yeah. you know, sometimes you then, just want to paint. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Or you don't know until like yeah. kind of halfway through, mm -hmm. and that really happens a lot to me. That. I don't have an idea or the idea is completely different. And then once I start painting and throughout the process, the painting just kind of like has its own message. You know, it looks like certain feeling or certain mood and I will just go with it. I will just work, you know, to emphasize that and take away things that don't work with the, you know, yeah. whatever it is, like an eerie mood or, or, or something about calmness, let's say. So then I will, oh, okay, the, the red popping out doesn't really work with that. The fade mm. eyes and the, the face, uh, yeah. the face, yeah, mood looks completely different. So I will add maybe blue in a, in a, in a background or, you know, something. It's not that direct, but just so it goes with the, with the feeling. Yeah. That's awesome. I think it's really funny um, when, like, I was at, this is years ago now, but I was at the art museum here in Chicago and we've got a really nice um, Monet section Mm. And uh, I'm sitting here enjoying these paintings, looking at them. And I'm just looking at them like, wow, just so cool seeing the brushwork and the color and everything. And then this woman comes up with a tour and she's <laughs> she's talking as if her best friend was Monet. And she's like, <laughs> she's like, this is what Mo he was thinking on this day when he was painting this painting. He, You know, this is what his his 
opinion. This, this is how he was feeling about whatever was going on yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. It's like, you don't know that. <laughs> what are you talking about? He could have, God. like, literally, he could have had oh, the worst night of sleep, had some coffee, got up, like, you know what? I'm going to go over to the beach and just do a painting because that makes me feel like, you know what? I had yeah. a really rough day. Whatever yeah. it is. It could have been anything. But then she, like, puts in this whole story of, you know, it's just it's just funny to me. It cracks me up because we know as artists that we're just people, and yeah. sometimes yeah. we just want to paint, you know. Um, or you sometimes know. we have an idea that yeah. won't translate, or you know, yeah. nobody will know really <laughs> about yeah. what it really was about. People want to be romantic about it. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. I just think it's it's a funny thing. Um, <laughs> um, so getting into you know getting back into and start jumping into painting um what was the first what was your like first approach as far as like like as far as like aesthetics and everything like mm -hmm. like i guess what what made you want to go sort of the direction you've gone uh where you're painting thicker and and yeah. kind of uh experimenting more with that like mm -hmm. what so that happened, I think that happened later in the process because the very first thing I did, I joined, I started going to like open figure drawing, live drawing uh, sessions yeah. where you draw from a model. Huh. And that was just figure drawing and that got me back into kind of the, you know, the practice of drawing and I thought it's, a, it's an excellent just way of both learning and and kind of figuring out, like just like you said, like what do I want from from painting, from drawing, from from art? And I I loved it. I always did uh, liked it, you know, back in school. And that did it, kind of. You know, the more I the more I was drawing, the more I did that, the more I wanted to do something else. Okay, I want to paint now. I want to do more of it. And yeah. what are the figures about? So the next thing was portrait, portrait drawing that I kind of explored with, with and it, uh, it was still drawing, so charcoal, pencil, but more about the actual human behind it, you know, a little more about the feelings, a little more about emotions. And then the next, the third probably, <laughs> or something, the next step was, okay, let's add color, let's see if I can, you know, say more. Yeah with with color with with painting and canvas and um so i guess that was the the process but about the texture i think again it, it must come from from emotion like you know to i want more from it like make it even more you know visceral and 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 yeah. you know make you feel and make and also it's very enjoyable you know for a painter as a process yeah. to me I'm sure people are different, and <laughs> artists. There are artists who yeah. love the smooth surface, and you know the the very fine texture. And I'm sure they take take joy in that. For me, working with a lot of paint and just you know just feeling it go and seeing the brush stroke, it's something what I liked in other artists as well. So like my some of my favorite artists where I can see the brush stroke and it might not be directly in your face as much as, you know, Freud, but uh, but you can still see it. You can kind of maybe maybe see the process like, yeah. you know, you know, see where the hand was going and and yeah. feel a little bit see the artist behind behind it, not just a finished yeah. product. I Yes, and I guess that's what I was trying to to do myself, not thinking about it. It wasn't a logical kind of decision, just yeah. the way that's the way I love it. That's the way I feel it. That's the way naturally I paint. So I'm just going to go with it and even maybe make it, you know, <laughs> stronger, not try to hide it and smooth out. I I remember trying like I bought this fan brush, you know, oh, yeah, go, yeah. I couldn't it drove me crazy it was like a, you know like a physical reaction i can't i can't do it i can't look at it and i love it in other people's work it's not that i you know don't agree with it or <laughs> think that's a bad way to to <laughs> paint no there are beautiful paintings that are smooth and you know the transitions are i think that it's delicate it's, there's nothing i mean there's nothing saying that you have to do it like i said before any one way but i think i mean 
artists evolve, they grow, they change. Yeah. They, I mean, when I was first getting started, I was all about painting as tight and smooth and as photorealistic as possible. And I was able to achieve that. Mm-hmm. And then I became and that's a good feeling, huh? bored with it. <laughs> but then I become sort of bored with that. Right. I start realizing I can almost kind of create the same feeling, get the same realistic, lifelike feeling with fewer brush strokes, and it's it's a little bit sexier. It's mm-hmm. a little bit more exciting when yeah. it, man, look at look at that painting how it's. It's it's really you know it's got this realistic vibe and feeling to it, but when you walk up and look at it, it's like whoa! Look at those brush strokes, where you know like I went to the um, the what's it called the the UK portrait mm-hmm. DP the VP, portrait. VP. Yep. yeah I, I I saw that show in 2012 I saw it when I was in England and I I went to I think it was in uh, Scotland that I saw the show, um, and it was. It was amazing. To, uh, it was mm-hmm. really cool to see because there was a lot of paintings there that were very good. A lot of great artists that were in the show. Uh, there were some paintings that were like technically super impressive because, <laughs> I mean, giant, giant paintings that look yeah. – it just looked like a giant print. Mm-hmm. And I went right up to it and couldn't see one brush stroke. It just looked – every pore, every – it was – it was when I uh, first of all, it's impressive, but I'm sort of like – Wow, this person! Thankfully, they found painting because they might otherwise be a serial killer. This is crazy. <laughs> this is... Yeah, but there you go. I think that's part <laughs> of the of the mystery. You know, it really yeah. depends on your on your uh, personality. Yeah. There are people who who that really find it. I don't know, may, meditative maybe, or Same, they are yeah. you know kind of also OCD. <laughs> and some people like to put together puzzles. I there don't you want to do a puzzle. Yeah, I'm not a puzzle person <laughs> yeah. either. So but then there you there's. Go. Yeah, and then there's paintings that are, you know, like for example, the, the, I'll never forget the painting that when I walked around the corner and saw it, I was like, oh yeah, it was uh, Aaliyah Chapin's painting mm-hmm, that she did. Mm-hmm. Um, I think of her her aunt or something like that. And that was the first my first introduction to her paintings, and um, I think she won that year. And oh, good. I walked up to the painting and I was like, the closer I got to it, the better it got. It's just yeah. it was like thicker and brushy, you know. And so for me as an artist, I started to – when I started to you know, continue to develop my, as a painter, that's the kind of stuff that really you know, I want to I try to – but it's not easy. You know, it's, it for, I found that it's, it's, a lot, it's a lot easier for me to be able to paint something super hyper-realistic that's nice and mm-hmm. tight than it is to paint loose and with expression. Hmm. Uh, I don't know why that – I mean – but That's I've noticed that I'm starting to get to that. I'm starting to to work. I'm starting to kind of play with it a little bit more mm-hmm. uh, in some of my recent commissions that I've done. Where I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna do some, some. You know, like actually, I was in. I was. I saw uh, some re- some sergeant paintings that inspired me. Where you know his work was was like that. Where it's so beautiful, so has so gestural, a, yeah. Yeah, and then you walk up and you just you can see just these. Yeah. Few brushwork strokes. Um, so for me personally, I think it's it's almost like a uh, a uh, a chance for me to just lighten up or loosen up a little bit. Mm-hmm. Like, hey, it's okay, dude. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to be so so tight. But how and do your uh, how do your <laughs> clients feel about that? Because I think like from the from the you know audience point of yeah. view, the highly realistic, highly finished paintings yeah. is something that really you know it's a mystery to to most people and it's you know it's the magic that that they are really impressed with that's so true how, how does it work for well, you Did... i haven't for for oil commissions i haven't really done anything like that that's more my own personal oh, type okay. thing uh, but for digital paintings I've, I've done there are a few clients that have allowed me to be um more expressive like mm-hmm. the new yorker I've gotten away with doing paintings for the New Yorker that are like half sketch with, oh, okay. um, you know, some real brushy expression of brushwork. And one one of my favorite ones I did for them, um, my intent was to do a final really tight finished painting, 
-hmm. but I got to a certain point where I was like, Ooh, I really like this just (laughs) like that. And I was like, I don't want to touch this. And part of me was like, should I save a copy of it? Because obviously it's digital. So I can yeah. save a copy and then just continue and then even have two versions, really. Mm-hmm. But um, I just emailed it to them and I said, what do you think about this? Because I kind of like it like this. And they were like, ooh, we love it. You're done. Oh, good. It was awesome. Like, oh, man, I only spent like an hour and a half on this. <laughs> who, who was it? Who did you um, paint? Or... It's a, so I don't know if you can see. It's hard for it to probably see. I'll, I'll look it up later, you know, like on your uh, website. It's actually or... hanging in a framed. I had it in a show, so it's framed back there. But I can't remember the guy's name, but he was he's a writer. So I was painting okay. a writer uh, for the New Yorker. Mm-hmm. But uh, that doesn't happen often, though, that kind of a thing. You mm-hmm. know, every once in a while, like the like Rolling Stone magazine has done that with me where they're like, uh, the, their instruction is basically like, hey, we want it to we want a really nice likeness and they might have an idea like we want him with his guitar or something, but most of their instruction is just make it look cool. Yeah. And I love that. Cause I'm like, okay, that's, that's the best kind of commission. Yeah. 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 I love that work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, it's the, the more I do, the more I, you know, do illustration and do painting, the more I find myself being attracted to the more like expressive and mm-hmm. loose, um, and I found that with my, my dad is a, is a plein air painter who he also he, his early in his career, he start he was a very tight, very realistic, like wildlife painter. He did like duck stamps and he did trout stamps and stuff, but he would paint um, very realistic, uh, very smooth, very tight. And the more he grew as an artist, the more expressive and brushy, yeah. brushy painterly. Now he does plein air paintings that are just like, you know, very thick mm-hmm. and just very bam, bam, bam. Yeah. And, and oh, it's, I'll, I'll have to look it yeah. up. But don't you think that's kind of the the rule with painters, with more most painters? The older they get, the you know they like kind of like let let it go, like everything. Yeah. <laughs> I guess in life you're just like I'm gonna be who I am, and yeah. maybe you go for something different in both in life and I art, think it's a good you know? thing. Yeah. I want to be myself and. This is what life is about and more abstract, like less is more and more abstracted shapes. Because that's kind of like a, yeah. right? It's like a, something that happens with men like the historic artists, the, the ones that yeah. we love and follow. <laughs> Another well, I think, thing I was oh, yeah. thinking, sorry. Oh, okay. for, no, go ahead. Go but ahead. just like a, I was thinking maybe we just, you know, like see worse and worse with time. <laughs> like the oh. older you get, you know, like you need glasses, yeah. you start <laughs> and you just that's feel funny. See a little fuzzy. Or well, that definitely happened with Monet. There you but, go. But uh, but he was already kind of that way before, like his painting techniques. But I don't know. I think I think part of it is, from 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 my perspective, anyways, is that like to me, painting nothing. There's nothing like painting. Like like I I it, I just I just love it. I love it so much. Like. Um, People people ask me all the time. I do a lot of like black and white studies, um, and people are like, why are you always doing black and white studies? It's because for one, I I'm just having fun pushing the light and pushing the values and and but also it's practice. You know, the more I practice understanding yeah. values and and the little subtleties that happen with light. Uh, the next time I do a, a painting in color, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be way better, and it's, it's gonna you know so it's, it's, I'm always trying to practice and, and push things, but the more and the more I've grown as an artist, the more I've gotten to the point where when I do a certain brushstroke, I'm like, oh, I'm not gonna touch that. That's it. <laughs> that that is just that there's yeah. that's you know and and I think that's it's the same thing like you I think you if you can say just as much or more with less there's mm-hmm. something um i think intriguing for an artist to yeah. be able to to um you know like like you've done this amazing crazy awesome portrait and where the whole thing every little piece of canvas is covered and there's so much detail but then you look at this painting that richard schmidt did and it's like so much linen showing and there's this like you know 20 brush strokes and somehow it's way more powerful. Yeah. There's something to yeah. that. 
<laughs> the, certainly, both for uh, for the artist and for the for the viewer, because yeah. then you know you they can make their their own story. You know, add yeah. add to it depending <laughs> on how they feel that day or whatever they read into it. Yeah, so that's yeah. Yeah, I mean, again, I hate to keep repeating myself, but there is there is no right way, and I think that's the thing for me. Um, that's why I love having. Uh, so many different types of artists on the podcast because there are so many techniques um, of of painting and drawing and uh, I think it's it's silly to think that you've found the one the one way you know yeah. but it, it's it's great to to see different approaches you know and that's one thing I really enjoy about looking at your work is you can see that you're having fun you know. I am, you know, I wouldn't be doing it <laughs> if I didn't. <laughs> I don't know what's the point, and I think it would show also in the work. So, you know, I want people to to see, to take it from, you know, from my work, take the joy and yeah. maybe feel it in response to my work as well, or just even not, if it's not <laughs> joy, because not every piece is about, you know, happy feelings, but yeah. take the emotion and feel it, feel it back. How, how do your kids feel about your your paintings? Um, I mean, <laughs> they they like them for most of the part. I think they like <laughs> the fact that um, mom is an an artist. They all do some kind of. I mean, they all they all have artistic little bit of you know talent or or, or interest. Some play instruments. Some some draw. Mm. So I think okay. they understand. But yeah, I mean, they, like you not doing your art for so many years and oh. all of a sudden they're like mom we didn't uh, know you were such a badass oh yeah, oh, like, yeah. that that was a big <laughs> surprise like the room we are in <laughs> which is like a large addition with a great great light it used to be their playroom so one day i just like kicked out all their toys <laughs> <laughs> and furniture and everything and painted it and was like nope that's mine now and yeah. and yeah it took some Took some time for them to get used to, but that's awesome. Yeah, that's so cool. Yeah, that's that's cool. So like, there is hope. Tell your wife yeah. there is there is hope. Yeah. No, <laughs> trust me. I I try to to uh, you know it's funny. There, there's been a couple times where during her pregnancy, she will wake up in the middle like three in the morning and she just can't go to sleep anymore. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll wake up and I'll go out to the kitchen and she's got her little planer box and she's oh. doing a little oil painting so she, she's like weird times she's like started mm -hmm, doing some mm -hmm. painting so um but uh yeah she'll get back into it you know like she um she, it, it's great because she's like the, a kind of opposite painter of me as far as mm -hmm. I, I love like how her approach is completely different and she's got her own thing and we've we we met we we basically met because we we're both artists in it and um we connected that way but I've never pushed my ways on her and she you know what I mean it's like we just yeah, it's good. it's kind of like two artists that coexist and we have our own thing and so um, is her work more uh, more like traditional or realistic is it she, she's mostly oil, or oil? Like she does a lot of portraits and oil mm -hmm. okay. um but it's really cool because so when we first started dating she never had done digital painting before. And uh, I started showing her some things, and she started playing around with it. She's like, oh, wow, this is cool. And she started doing some things that were pretty good. I'm like, wow, she's catching on pretty quick. <laughs> and then uh, there was actually a couple illustrations that I that I was working on for a client, and I had so many at once. And uh, this one particular one I was doing of Tiger Woods, I wanted to, to add – it was like a, it was like a funny kind of caricature painting of him, uh, but painted very realistic – and I, I had this painting where he's holding a golf club up, but I wanted to have some bras and panties like hanging <laughs> over his wrist. And um, I started them, but I didn't have really time. I needed to work on another one. And I just asked her, I'm like, do you think you could finish these and, and make it blend in? And she's like, oh, sure. So she just she just painted them. And I'm like, wow, she did it. Yeah. Like it was like it was. You can't even tell. It's like flawless. And and they loved that part. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Probably. And, and so I was like, man, we could start like a like a, an art, Teamwork, cool art company. Teamwork, yeah. yeah. Whole... Um, so it's really cool. But it's also funny because, you know, 
she'll come to, into my studio when I'm working on something and she'll just be like, hmm. I go, what? <laughs> it's not right with that that eye right there. What are you talking about? It's perfect. What are you talking about? And then I look at him like, oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> so that's, she'll have like a really great, good like, too. yeah. Um, yeah. That you can like bounce off oh, each yeah. other that way, yeah. Yeah, it's it's fun. Like, you know, she's, you know, it's 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 interesting too because she went to uh, school for painting, but it wasn't like an art school. and It was like a but more of a college that, you know, their idea of art was throwing crap out of canvas and then talking about it for a while. <laughs> um, Conceptual. Yeah. Art school. Yeah. Uh, yeah. When I went to the her graduation, there was a classroom that said drawing, mm -hmm. uh, and I, when we went in, there was no drawings. <laughs> there was a pile of sand on the floor with a student's name next to it, with an explanation of what it meant. Uh, it was ridiculous. But um, <laughs> I, uh, you know, th but since we've been together, she's, you know, I've taught her some some painting techniques and different things. Um, and she's she's like wow like the, but the simplest little thing that mm -hmm. she didn't get before just she just needed someone to say hey maybe yeah. try this and all of a sudden she takes it to her own place and um, that's awesome yeah no she's great I I feel bad that I wish that she could paint a lot more <laughs> one day it'll she'll be able to do more but but it's awesome um, does your husband do painting or anything or is he kind of no like, he does num home? numbers numbers <laughs> yeah so. Uh, opposite oh my gosh yeah it's very very <laughs> very opposite yeah yeah i have i have a i don't have a good relationship with numbers um <laughs> i admit that <laughs> um speaking of did you hear that sound that sound means <laughs> that we've got some uh, some fan questions questions from fans well, it still looks like I have I have one question for you from Bo Faulkner, mm -hmm. who says he says, "Hey, dude, I'm gonna pretend I'm gonna try to do his voice because I don't know who this is, and I, and and just for future reference, I prefer people to hand to to send in audio questions, like record their voices because it's more interesting for the podcast to hear the person's voice. But since that didn't happen, it's fine. I'm gonna pretend to do his voice. I don't know what his voice is, but uh, hey, dude, I'm a big fan of Agnes and uh, would love to know about her color palette, including any colors she sees as secret weapons or go to ah. preferred mediums, surface prep and the extent of her underpainting would also be curious as to how many sessions drying cycles one of her portraits takes. We'll be listening for the first time on this podcast. Thanks. <laughs> oh, wow. So many questions in one. All the technical, all my secrets <laughs> yeah. revealed in oh, one answer. Yeah. You know, that's a great, great, great questions and um, a lot of insights that I can share. Uh, I'm, the one thing I'm going to say in the beginning, I'm not very technical and I'm not attached to the methods that I use. I kind of go with whatever is easiest and whatever works. So I'll try different things and it has to be a, like a simple thing. I will not like, you know, mix many things together and buy difficult tools or anything to do it. And if it works, I'll stick with it. Yeah. So that's, and you know, everyone has their own methods. So starting with what? The surface, we talked a little bit about it. It's usually unstretched canvas. But I also work on boards, just like kind of wooden panels uh, and uh, gessoed. So just your basic kind of uh, gambling, I think, acrylic gesso, white gesso. Then I'll put uh, a layer of, of uh, background color. That's usually the first thing I do. And like some of the, I don't know what exactly behind me but I'll and that's maybe an interesting tip and I heard it uh, from another artist the leftover paint on my palette from a from a session you know because when it dries I usually can work for two days with the same with the same paint but after that it kind of dries even if it dries a little bit on the top it gets you know this weird texture so I want to reuse it so instead of just uh, wasting it tossing it <clears throat> I will pick some of that paint mix it with uh, gamzol 
or a little bit of white kind of depending on what I'm going for and I'll use it to prime the background so to to paint the background color for the text paintings not even usually it's a random color so I'll I'll mix what I have some hanging from yesterday's and there was a lot of blue color in my in my painting so there is the the, the background color turned out like this cool shade of light blue and I like the randomness of it because yeah. then I'll have to work with the kind of pushes somewhat you. ran yeah it pushes you to find the different okay what does it you know what what is it gonna be what's the composition what's the mode yeah. what's what's the colors <laughs> sometimes you'll go with with the uh complementary or contrasting and so i like that so that's one cool. thing how i prepare um what was what was a palette right the colors in my palette of course it depends on the subject on the model the uh, again the idea uh, but it's nothing weird. I think it's pretty traditional uh, colors. So titanium, white, cool and warm of each of the colors that I'll be using. So I don't use all of them at, uh, in every session, but like for yellow, so if I need yellow, I'll use lemon yellow and cad. Uh, ochre, yellow ochre is a must kind of for me. I love that color and I use it for skin tones. So light yellow ochre and transparent, that's like two shades of, of it. Uh, reds would be alizarin and vermilion. So I don't really like cadmium red, but I love the, the shade of vermilion. So that's my go-to warm red. Uh, greens, sap green, and I actually like phthalo green, which is a dangerous color to use but um i like uh, i like the danger of it and <laughs> why, why, why danger <laughs> well you know you you need a little bit to kind of make everything it's like the fallow blue and fallow green to make everything that shade it kind of tran <laughs> to, to, you know translates to everything yeah. else and um and changes the whole mood uh, oh, I, I love see. it. I see yeah, that yeah. way, you know, it's yeah. like you have to be very careful. Also, you will have it on your hands for the next weeks and <laughs> whatever else you touch. Yeah, that's um, funny. Some earth tones, so sienna and transparent oxide red, amber, raw amber is, you know, a must. I don't know what blues I use, Prussian, I think, and cobalt blue. Secret weapons. I like the king's blue, which is the light blue, and you can mix it easily. That's ultramar uh, ultramarine, white, and a tiny bit of alizarin. But I like to have it ready, mm. and just and that's also for skin tone. So I'll use it to cool down the skin tone, or just kind of like take the saturation down for whatever yeah. skin shade I already missed, mixed for myself. That's, mm -hmm. That's cool. And it's called King's Blue? Yeah, it is. King's I've never Blue. Heard of that before. Yeah, it's like this baby blue, like oh, okay. baby, baby boy. So I, I tend blue. to work with a very limited palette. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, I just, I, I, I enjoy, um, like, I, 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 I like making all of my color, basically. Yeah, that's, that's the best. Um, so um, I'm very much interested in the Zorn palette. I do mm -hmm. a lot with that. Um, but I'll add a little bit of blues in there um, mm -hmm. instead of So what just... do you use for your uh, yellow, red, and um, blue? You, you do the traditional ochre? Uh, I'll use yellow red? ochre. Uh -huh. Yellow ochre. Um, and I'll use either a vermilion or a cad or a alizarin not all of them just one i'll okay. pick which mm -hmm. one's going to be my red um and then i'll use black and white and that's pretty much it uh, okay. i can get i can get all my range from that yes that i need um but i will sometimes um uh well i, I mean it depends like i'll i'll sometimes just bring in more color like i'll bring in like a lemon yellow or something yeah if I, want it. I love I want... lemon yellow yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, i also one thing that i've st started doing like years ago um, i think my dad kind of tipped me on it which was i use a a naples yellow light mm -hmm. um instead of my white a lot of times so it it because white is so cool 
Yeah, I but agree. This, this That's way, good... it, it, it can like warm things a little bit more. Um, so, but other than that, I I try to not. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know. I I, I don't like to comp- overcomplicate it with too much. Um, but I mean, some painters are just amazing. In like like Jeremy Lipking is an artist that I really like a lot, and I I was I watched a video of his once, and I mean, it looked like there was thirty tubes of paint squirted all over this palette. Yeah. But I mean. He knows what he's doing, <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. so that's how he does it. But but I remember watching and I couldn't believe how much paint was there. I'm like, wow, this is crazy. Um, but uh, but yeah, I mean, and I'm, again, it's it's fun, you know, like fun yeah. trying different colors. So I'll sometimes oh, yeah. buy really random colors, thinking I'll use it for the outline. You know, the way I do the portraits with the oh, outline. Yeah. And I, I'll buy something, you know, with a really weird name, Horizon Midnight Blue or something like yeah. that, just for the outline. And then I might end up using it a little bit for the skin or for something, you know, else in the in the painting just to experiment. And I feel like that's fun, too. You know, that yeah. makes it a little bit different. It's each interesting time. how paints can like how they can vary, like what brand to brand, like what mm-hmm. is there a brand that you prefer? Yeah, yes. So, with, like I said, I'm not very technical or picky with my materials, except for paint. I mean, I still I have different brands and I use uh, many. But I have to say, in my experience, the better the paint, which means the more expensive oil yeah. paint, the better it behaves. It really, it really is the quality, both like the texture and the the pigments. You know, the, yeah. you, you need a little bit, and not a little bit, but much less of a of a good quality paint to to achieve a certain color than you would with a with a lesser lesser quality and less expensive brand. Yeah. So I like the Michael Harding, the and I'm gonna butcher all the names, but Senelier mm, okay. brand, the French brand, uh, Holland, Old Holland, mm. Gamblin, and I have some Windsor Newton uh, uh, colors that I'm really attached to. So like my ochres come from them and i like i like the shades i think that's the the four main four five five main ones that i use how about you what's your uh, favorite uh, well i i love old holland but old like holland. Said, mm-hmm. very expensive yeah <laughs> so i only have a couple tubes of that that i like to use um uh but i i have i use uh windsor newton um this actual this company i think they're based out of wisconsin uh, Richard Richardson, or huh. I don't know where I. I think I put the tube back up there, but um, they contacted me like a year or so ago and said, "Hey, we like your work. Um, would you like to try some of our paint?" And so they sent. They knew I like to work with a Zorn palette, so they sent me like a the set. exact color. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, and I really like their paint. It's very buttery. It's really nice. Oh, uh, buttery is good for texture. Yeah, I really like it. <laughs> um, so I've been using that. Um, I'm doing like a small little study. Um, actually, doing a mm-hmm. small little study. <laughs> That's cool. This is a, this is an oil that I've started doing. Of um, he's a comedian that I love. His name is Bobby Lee. <laughs> and um, it looks good already. So yeah, that's only like like an hour and a half or so, just blocking in. And um, but uh, that paint, I just really love how that paint works. It's very, it's very, it's, like I said. The best way to say it is buttery. It's very, it mixes very well. I don't use very much medium yeah. um, as well. But um, one thing I found that's interesting is I found that there's a yellow ochre that I prefer over everything else. And it's the only paint I buy from this brand is that Rembrandt brand. Uh, yeah, um, that's a good brand too. Their yellow ochre, for I don't know what it is, but it's different than, it. there's something about their yellow ochre. So mm. if you haven't tried it, just try it. So I'm something... gonna I'm gonna try because yellow it... ochre is like my go to yellow and yeah, that's my favorite. Go well. through it, a lot. It seems to it. be able to to, um, I guess I w- I would say bend. Like you can mm-hmm. you can get more out of it. I think like you can you can get better greens and different things mm-hmm. out of it than I've noticed from other ones. So but that's the interesting thing about paint is you can get like five tubes of yellow ochre and they're all gonna be different. Absolutely. So, yeah. Yeah. 
And it's with painting the way, you know, like the way I paint and like you were saying too, with the, with the texture and so much of it, you go through a lot of paint too. So lately I yeah. started <laughs> buying those, whatever it is, 400, 200 <laughs> milliliter, the huge tubes of paint yeah. because you know, like the small ones, really, I go through, have to buy them constantly. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's. If you're gonna want those, that's the one thing I've I've seen some paintings that are so thick. I'm like, and they're huge paintings. Yeah. I'm like, wow, that was a lot of paint. <laughs> I mean, there are ways to cut the paint down with adding, um, I don't know, marble powder and different like yeah. mediums. Um, uh, I don't know. I think I've tried some of those mediums and didn't like it. But I'm sure there is a way to do it to do it well. I just don't really know it, and yeah, haven't <laughs> experiment with it. <laughs> um, yeah, there. I was, um, gosh, I can't, I'm trying to think of who it was that I was talking to. Ooh, I can't remember now. I've, I've, I've somebody that I talked <laughs> to on this podcast, um, one of the, there's, I've talked to several oil painters and now I'm curious, I'm gonna have to go back and check, uh, through the list, but there, there was something that they mix into their paint to, to get mm -hmm. like real nice, thick, um, it's going to drive me nuts now. I'm going to have to <laughs> go back through. Yeah, find but, out and let me know. Um, yeah, I mean, that it, would... might, it might be, um, it might have been Justin Kaufman, Coral. Mm -hmm. um, he's an awesome, awesome oh, painter. Oh, I have his print. That's like uh, one of the prints I ever bought online. Oh, that's awesome. One of his amazing trees. <sighs> you know what's crazy? So... Man, I love that guy. I don't know if you've gotten to meet him before, but he is no. one of the most down to earth, humble, nicest, most kindest guys ever. Um, and he he's just an amazing artist. Lives in the middle of the woods. He has like <laughs> this like old kind of barn that he's turned into an art studio, and it's just amazing. But uh, last September, I went to Pasadena for Lightbox, and I met him there in person. We've been friends for a long time, but we never met in person. So we met, and he brought uh, uh, out one of his tree paintings uh, to see in person, and it it was crazy because you from like three feet away it just looks so photorealistic that you're like, it does. What are you? But then you, you come up just a foot mm -hmm. closer and it's just gop gooped on paint, and you're like, I know it's Jackson Pollock up close. <laughs> I know, I know. It's, I love it when he posts. Oh, I love it. Um, oh. Close ups and details of his work. Oh yeah, it's that. That's that's exactly what I'm talking about. Is the kind of stuff that I get excited about. Is why I love like the same with your work. Is when you know. And and here's another thing. Um, I wanted to touch base before I forget about your is the other thing I, I really enjoy about some of your work is that you are you you'll, there'll be like this random <laughs> like like spot of green or something on the face or like something that. I guess it's not like represent, represent, rep, representing, you know, a, rep, a good representation, I guess, is what I'm trying to say, of like uh, traditional, like, you know, these are the colors we're supposed to use for the face, you know? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. But like, you'll, it'll be like this, like, random, like, like blue or something, just like mm -hmm. a nice stroke. And uh, I love that kind of stuff. I love, um, you know, and so I was going to ask you, like, what's your thought behind that when you're doing that? Mm -hmm. Like, because obviously we think about values. Right? right, you know, in temperature and that sort of thing, but there's something so freeing and, and exciting about that as well, where you're just like, man, I think I want to make this pop. I'm going to add this color in that spot. Yeah, so definitely, I want to make it more exciting, like just thinking about the painting. But the way, like, it comes to me, I it's usually because I see that color. So you know, like the blues and greens that are naturally in your skin. And I see a tiny bit of it. So if you want and I just go for it, you know, okay. you know, and if it's a warm one, it will be like a warm green, but it, you know, like a lime green kinda. Yeah. And then if the features, if it's well, let's say a man's, you know, features cheek that is you know very chiseled, sharp, it will be like a green a green line. Uh, green okay. yeah line going um according <laughs> to the following yeah. kind of the face planes if it's maybe a more like a smooth round face of a woman and i see the blues there it will be you know more of a round kind of 
swirly shape of the blue, but I definitely just crank it up, take it to, yeah. and see, you know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Some of the, some of the paintings, even though they look very kind of expressive and done, you know, just like that, it's actually a lot of, a lot of layers or like not, not literally taking off. I don't like scrape them, but I, it's like one brush stroke and it doesn't work. You know, maybe the blue was too, too vibrant and I'll go with another blue over it mm -hmm. or next to it or make it, you know, make it smaller. So there is a lot going on. Yeah. Yeah. Just by but all that adds adding. character to it as well. I know? think so. I think yeah. so. And again, like I said, sometimes it works, sometimes it, doesn't and yeah. so what you know you but that's what's fun about it and also that there's that vibration of color yeah you know that it's you know I, I it was cool one thing that inspired me when i was talking to Aaliyah was she was saying how when she's working on a painting she will mix um and you know mix what she's trying to do the the, the color value whatever and she just puts it down and if it's not right she just mixes the next one and she doesn't paint over it, she just kind of paints around it and lets it kind of oh. just like overpower vi kind of vibrates yeah. with the uh, with the rest of the color and, and it um, and it's okay. interesting because uh, I started doing that like right away. I was working on some oil commissions and and you know I you know what it's like when you're trying to like mix on your palette or whatever and you think it's right, you put it on and it's like oh that's not right, you know. Yeah, yeah. And so I I. You know, even though I was working on a commission, I was like, I'm going to I'm going to try that because that sounds really interesting. And so I started doing it. And mm -hmm. what I started noticing was it, it just started they started almost to feel like there's a little bit more movement in the painting, a little bit more life in there. Yeah. And I started getting excited. I'm like, <laughs> oh, like, like this is cool. Like they don't have to sit here and like get every little thing perfect. Color, you know, there, there's something about that that makes it feel like it's moving a little bit yeah because it uh, is it's it's yeah. moving you know first in your eye and then in your brain you know you, yeah. you make up the rest it's kind of like with the impressionistic paintings or pointillism yeah. right that you can add put different colors and just blotches of yeah. it but looking from afar or from a distance yeah. at it you will see the whole the whole picture because your brain puts it together and yeah but like you said it adds the the movement and the colors are more vibrant are you familiar uh, with uh with philip burke's work no i don't think i am I'm, maybe i saw the work but don't recognize okay. the name if you if you look up philip burke he he's an artist he's he does caricature illust, illust, or oil paintings but he's been doing them for like 25 30 years or more uh, very famous for being in Rolling Stone. He used to be in like every issue of Rolling Stone. He works on gi giant, large white canvases, uh, and his paintings are huge. And th when you would open up an issue of Rolling Stone, it'd be like the first page would be like mm. Kurt Cobain or whoever it is. And he he's one of those artists that I've always been like, man, that guy is free with his color because he'll have every color you can think of on the face. <laughs> And it's it's and it still works. Oh yeah, like they'll just be like yeah. this giant orange streak with a pink streak and green and all over, and it, and it's just like this amazing, awesome, powerful likeness. And and uh, it's it's one it's it's a testament of how, like basically as long as you are focusing on the values, right? You know, values are you of can course, kind of yeah. do whatever. But it, it in one way I think it's like a mental hurdle that you have to get past. <laughs> It is. Yeah, it because is. otherwise it's, like, it's like, like, I don't know, I'm too afraid, you know? <laughs> so, but yeah, that's really cool, though. It's awesome hearing about your, uh, your, your thought process on that. That's really cool. Yeah. And another thing that um, maybe kind of explains the process, too, is like I was uh, saying a little bit about it, that at some point I don't really think about the starting point, the, the source, the model or the photograph or whatever it was, but really uh, concentrating on the painting as a as a being kind of as a yeah. separate separate being from everything else from the from the from the source material, and thinking does this work? Does this painting look you know like a, like it could work? Like it could 
uh, it could uh, transport you somewhere, you know, to a yeah. place like it can uh, talk about what I wanted to talk about. And and there are different things like the you know things I I said right now about the message and the idea, but also on a very uh, compositional level, you know, does the composition work? Is the does it look you know off centered the way I wanted it? So or is it imbalanced? And the colors do they work together? Are the complementary colors doing what I thought they will? Or are they completely fighting with each other and just looks like I randomly put them on? And yeah. that would be, you know, something without looking at the, you know, photograph or is the couch behind my model warm red or, or cold red. But does the painting need alizarin or vermilion for that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. Very cool. And it took me some time. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, well, it, yeah. it takes, <laughs> right, in, in like painting practice to be free from the from the realistic whatever starting point. Yeah, mm -hmm. it definitely, it's one of those things, I think, that, um, I mean, just as being an artist in general, it's not, you know, what's that saying? Like, it, it takes 10,000 10, 000 times right. to, like, you know, whatever. Yeah. I remember when I was a kid, I, I was obsessed with being an artist um, ever since I was a young, I mean, I, ever since I can remember, really. But I remember my dad, whenever I would be frustrated, um with a drawing or I couldn't get something right, my, my dad would be like, um, you know, like when I started painting or whatever, it's like, hey, you need you need to do at least 500 or more paintings. Oh, bad, yeah. and, and bad and ones too. Bad ones, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Before you're really gonna get a hand. And and I, I remember just thinking, well, that sucks. You know, it does. <laughs> I'm gonna get it done in 20. You know, like I'm not gonna be, I'm not gonna wait. I'm, no, it's not gonna take me 500. You know what I mean? But like, I remember always thinking that, like, you know, but it helped. It helped me to to not be as frustrated. Like, okay, yeah. doing the best I can. I'm going to keep pushing. I'm going to keep pushing uh, with everything. Inking, you know, because inking is not easy to do well. You I know, bet. Um, unless you're doing it on an iPad. <laughs> <laughs> and you can delete, go back. <laughs> no, I, 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 it's. I just give people a hard time because. I've been noticing a lot of artists that work on iPads now. And I do paintings on iPads, but I just do like straight up painting. Mm -hmm. So there's, I don't use like some weird tricks really that the yeah. iPad mm -hmm. does. But there are some settings that I'm not even 100% sure. You can just with how they use work. a photograph, right? And then just kind no. of well, transform I don't, it. Oh, I don't know. I'm not even talking about that. Like I'm talking about they have like pen tools where you can go like this and it'll, it'll like adjust your line and make it oh. perfect thin, thick, perfect. Mm -hmm. So you can do like this really nice, almost um, the graphic, Chinese brush. Type yeah, like real perfect looking. Stroke. Like like instead of like a hand, like what it would look like with real ink, where an artist has developed 20 years to get this perfect thing, <laughs> you can get an iPad now and just go and then it, it, mm. so it might be a little wonky, but then you watch it go perfect. Uh -huh. Yeah, That's, mm, I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it. But anyways, um, I've got some fan art to show you, uh, which is always fun. So I'm going to show you some some work from awesome. some people all over the world. Hope I'm ready. Okay, cool. So I'm going to share this with you. Let me know if you see this. Do you see this? Yeah, yeah, I do. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> it's, it's great. Yeah, no, I I love it. Awesome. This um, is um by yeah. Walid Shihab. Did this. Okay, Walid. That's. Uh, Great drawing, and I, I love the colors, so he was pushing the colors. Yeah. I see vermilion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I really like the, uh, the the big, like, layered brush strokes, too. It's pretty cool. Yeah. And awesome. um, talk about layers. It's like transparent layers put over. I like it, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Very It's nice. a fun thing about uh, digital painting, too, is you're, you, you can experiment quite a, quite a bit with it. Which is kind of cool. There's not one way to do that either, you know. Awesome. Ah, uh, <laughs> there's the same uh, photograph. I like. <laughs> I like my neck. I wish. Was, yeah, it looked like that. It's great. <laughs> little, little sassy. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? This is by uh, Ray Shipman. <laughs> Thank you, Ray. Yeah, it's wonderful. <laughs> and uh. <laughs> 
<laughs> Here's a ah, phone. Oh my goodness. That looks like me. That's just just me. <laughs> it's a fun expression. This is by Jacques Lamanier. Jacques <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one. I that's that's just me. I mean, that yeah. looks like a photograph. <laughs> yeah. awesome. Really nice, nice job, Jacques, with the expression and the eyes too. Yeah, yeah, and it's so, it's exactly what I do with my face. It goes like different <laughs> ways. <laughs> Perfect. And um, it's a fun one. This is by ah. uh, Julio Caesar Warns. Oh, thank you, Julio. That's me 20 years ago, I think. <laughs> <laughs> also painting. I love the paintbrush. Yes, it's beautiful. Mm, it's pretty cool. Very really cool, cool uh, pencil work, too. Like, I like the style. Yeah, yeah. Uh, ah! That's a fun one. <laughs> that's a fun one. Yeah, it reminds me of some of the cartoons from the 80s. You know, like we watched as kids, Johnny Bravo. And, I don't know, oh, okay. Right? Cool. You know what Very this cool. reminds me? Do you know um, uh, Risco? Have you heard no, of Risco? No, should, should I? Uh, no. He 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 was a, he was a caricature illustrator that was, I think, way bigger in the um, the eighties and nineties. Mm -hmm, I, mm -hmm. I have one of his books, really cool. But this reminds me a lot of it. Uh, I love this, it. This is by Dominic Zeilinger. Thanks, Dominic. Yeah, the cheekbones. Yeah. That. yeah. <laughs> Cool. I love I love the the shape uh, and the of the, the face. Yeah, the exploration here it's pretty funny. Mm -hmm. the mouth. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Yeah. Very good. <gasps> the cool one. Ah, yeah. it's a cool one. Yeah, this is by uh, Rachel Schneider. Mm. Thanks, Rachel. There is um, there is the line, you know, like yeah. in my work and what I like. That's very cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's really cool. I I really like just the. Uh, it, it's 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 a really unique approach, you know, like with the, the mm -hmm. line and the little patches of paint there. It's pretty yeah, awesome. color. It's nice. Mm -hmm. um, oh, this one's kind of small. Let me zoom in. This is by um, Serena Garst. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Serena. Cool. Very, very, yeah, nice. Good job. And <laughs> My favorite T-shirt is there, so I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Here's a oh fun my one. goodness! <laughs> this is by Juan uh, Gastelum. That's awesome, Juan. I would love to know the story behind it. What, what am I doing? Let's let's see there. <laughs> <laughs> this is a flying something I'm sitting on. Mm. Right? What what is this? Tank I don't know. The wings? <laughs> okay. Like a, a, maybe a, a flying cushion. Flying cushion. Uh, I would love to do that. <laughs> And then what's happening <laughs> up up top? I see the maybe that's um, uh, Thor, or oh, I don't know. There, it looks like there's lightning. I don't well, know. there's a naked man up there. So <laughs> yeah. I don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> like that. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm a kitty too, so that's yeah. <laughs> that's and by the way, cool. I gotta say, um, uh, Juan is he. I just think it's worth mentioning just for people and just to thank him personally. But he wrote me a really, really awesome, nice letter this week, uh, just thanking me for the podcast and uh, just for you know what it's meant to him as an artist living in Mexico. Um, and so, thank you so much uh, for that oh. letter because that really meant a lot. Um, that was really cool. So thanks, man. I really appreciate thank it. And for the drawing, thank you. Holden. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, oh, that's actually the last drawing. I thought there was more, but that's the last one. Well, it's um, a good way to, to yeah. finish them. <laughs> uh, so thank you uh, so much. Thank you. Um, for that, everybody. Can you see me again? Yes. Okay. Yes, I can see now. Um, it's weird. It used to be I, when I switched back, I I could see it. There's a switch, but it, no, I don't. No, you don't. See you yeah. can't tell. <laughs> um, so. Um, Thank you so much for for joining me for this. It's been so much fun talking with you. But before we go or anything, um, did you want to um, walk around and show some things in your studio? Um, um, sure, if you, you think wanted... that's. Well, I, you mentioned it earlier, so I didn't know if there was something you wanted to show or if it's. Just, I was thinking, just if you know, there is a question related. To oh, okay. Thank okay. you. Know, in particular. Yeah. And that would make sense, but. <laughs> okay. <All right. laughs> no, not 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 no, necessary. Um, yeah. But. Uh, Thank you again. I really appreciate you taking the time. It's been, you know, I, I've never met you before. So this is like really, you know, 
fun way to, to get to know you a little bit and talk to you. And I hope yeah. we can one of these Same. days. Same. I hope we'll uh, run into into each yeah. other. And I've I've listened to your podcast, you know, before. I mean, to several of the of the guests you had, and I really enjoy it. I love. Oh, thank you. I love art podcasts, but, you know, especially <laughs> like interviews and, and getting to know the people. So thanks yeah. for that. Yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm so happy to be able to, uh, to be able to, to uh, kind of grow a community of artists. You yeah. Know, all yeah, get to know really each other. It's a community. Um, so anything um, that you want to promote for people, like where they can follow you or anything coming up, like shows or anything? I know it's been a weird time. For I mean, yeah, most, so. most things are either canceled <laughs> or postponed yeah. right now. But I have a, I have a painting in a show in the um, museum, the uh, Contemporary Museum of Art here in Virginia. So that's a big, big thing. They do the annual, uh, annual show, kind of uh, presenting new artists. Mm. It's called New Waves, at the Virginia Mocha. Oh, cool. And the opening was supposed to happen like the weekend before the quarantine, you know, mm. happened. So that's all. But it's hanging. <laughs> it's there. And yeah. as soon as the museum will open, it will it will be open. It will run for uh, half a year or something till January, at least. Mm. So that's okay. a big thing. And, and, and I'm really excited about that. I'm also going to have a virtual studio tour next week with them. So on Instagram, if... If people are interested in that, the museum will be talking to me next next week, Friday, I think. Yes, Friday, June, June 19th. Okay. Um, awesome. I, have a, I think I still have a solo show, but now the schedule, you know, my things got may, may be shuffled and, and look different. But I was supposed to have a solo show here in Richmond um, next year. So... More information on that and pretty much like everything else uh, will be posted on my website, Instagram. I'm pretty active on my on Instagram, so you, you'll know that way. Everyone who, who'd like to know, just follow the social media and I'll be posting any new group shows or, or shows or events there. Excellent. Yeah. Cool. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, and you. again, uh, thank you everyone for um, uh, supporting the podcast and for following along and everything and participating with the with the art and so on. And uh, until next time, we'll see you soon. <laughs> bye bye. You want answers? <laughs>